And welcome to another episode of Experts Speak. I'm Michael DeLon. Today, I am talking with Matthew Sanjari. And well, first of all, Matthew, thank you, man, for uh, spending some time with me on my podcast. Michael, thanks for having me. I'm looking forward to our convo today. Oh, I am too. I am too. It's going to be a, a great thing. So uh, Matthew's the, the founder of um, Prime Consulting. He works with, with business owners, entrepreneurs, businesses, um, helping you understand that you need to build your business by building your people. And, and we're going to take a deep dive into this because that's really a hot button for me is building culture and people and, and helping them grow the enterprise. Um, so as we get into the conversation, Matthew, tell me, how in the world did you get doing what you're doing today? Michael, by accident, I fell into this, okay? And I know that's that, that's not the most intentional <laughs> language, or, or but I fell into it. Yeah, truthfully, I've done, a, I've done a bunch of things so far, okay, yeah. in my life. And I've, I've realized... You know, I've, I've worked as a pastor for over 12 years. Uh, I ran a marketing company for nine that I had a successful exit from, started a real estate development company. And now as a business coach and business consultant, I basically recognize that it didn't matter what I did. Um, at the end of the day, the window dressing changed, but I was always about seeing people reach their full potential. Mm. And so how I got into this, I, you know, after my exit, uh, about a year and a half ago, I was sitting there saying, you know what, I've grinded for nine years. I've worked hard. I've, I've built people up. I've built systems, built a business. I need a break. And that lasted all of about four days before my inner entrepreneur said, you need to get up and do something. Yeah. And um, an old client reached out to me and said, you know, we love how we loved our working relationship with you. We love that, you know, even though the marketing was great, we could have hired any marketing company, right. but we love that you were always honest that you always shot us straight and that you cared about the entire process of our business. So how about instead of just doing that for marketing, why don't you do that for marketing, sales, HR, finance, operations, all of it. And I had my first business consulting client. And from there, I told other clients, I told other friends and they told people. And next thing you know, within about a month, month and a half, I had a full blown business. Wow. And, and here we are a year and a half later. And I'm loving life in this duality of being a business coach and a business consultant hybrid. I love it. I love it. That's and and he he gave us a great marketing um point that he didn't say, but we've got to read between the lines of find a need and fill fill it. And that's really what you did by accident, really. But there was a need in the market. Your your clients knew you because of the relationship that you had with them. So, and I talk a lot about relationship marketing because it's so important. But then the client said, hey, I've got other other things that I think you could solve. And you had the courage to jump in there and go, all right, let's see how this works. And lo and behold, now you've got a thriving business, which is awesome. Way to go. Talk to us now about, about what you do with business owners and some of the, I guess, some of the struggles business owners have with, with understanding how important it is to build into their people and their team so that they can grow their businesses. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, great question. So just to give you a bit of background, on the business coaching side, I'm working with entrepreneurs and business owners on a lot of mindset related things. So we're talking right. strategy, we're talking performance, we're talking, you know, the frustrations that business owners have, yeah. right? But I've also recognized that on the business consulting side, there's also a need to work with their teams, to work within the business on systems, structures, implementation. Yeah. My, my big thing is how do we marry the two? Right. And I love, you know, you, you, you brought up my tagline, you know, if we build people, we build business at the end of the day, you know, we often forget that, Hey, there could be, you know, you can scroll social media, you can go read books and there's the latest, greatest strategy out yeah. there. And these strategies are great. These systems that you can build are great. And I'm not here to, to dismiss any of that, but I do want to highlight that no business ever started because someone had a great system. <laughs> Every business Every business was started by a person recognizing a need yeah. and saying, I'm going to fill it. Some do it better than others. Some had, you know, probably probably some, some holier intentions than others. But at the end of the day, we all start something as people. There's yeah. always a why behind the what. And so for me, it's really helping people recognize that, hey, if that's how you started, then that's how you should continue. And mm -hmm. we use systems we use structures to help make sure that our foundation, our underpinning, um, our foundation is real solid. At the end of the day, let's focus on building people. And how do we do that? Well, culture, leadership development. It can be, you know, um, improving delegation. Well, one of the big things that right now 
uh, I'm working on with someone is the other day I'm working with a client and, you know, they're trying to funnel responsibility through the organization, trying to make sure that, you know, hey, we're growing. We got to, we got to scale. We, we've got to push more things onto our employees. And I recognized really quickly that they were so good at delegating tasks, but not so good at delegating responsibility. Yes. Wow. And it, yeah. And it's just this, uh, there's just this idea that, you know, at the end of the day, Michael, and I'm sure you know this, I can hand a checklist to anybody. Listen, I'm not, I'm not the brightest guy, but I promise you I could follow a checklist. Okay. Uh, so I can delegate tasks, but empowering people and making sure that they feel empowered and have decision-making ability over that checklist, that's a whole other world. And that's true leadership. That is, that's amazing. That that brings me all the way back to, and this is um, probably before your time, Stephen Covey and Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, right? After that book, which was just a seminal book that changed my life, I read one of his next books, which was um, Principle-Centered Leadership. And in that book, he unpacks this concept called stewardship delegation. And it's exactly what you're talking about. And I, I want you to unpack that a little bit more because delegation for entrepreneurs, A, is really hard because we, we we just like to hold things. But then when nobody teaches us how to do it, so we just say, okay, go do it, go do it. And then we try to micromanage it because they don't do it the way I do it. And so, and, it, and it's not, it just doesn't work unless it's done well. Unpack this whole delegation thing just a little bit and we'll talk about some other things. Yeah, let's look at it from two angles. There's the practical and there's the personal. On a practical level, when I delegate something to someone, if I just give them things to do, they may do it right. They may not do it right. They may have questions. But at the end of the day, the burden to micromanage or manage is on me. They're going to come to me with questions. And so I'm still going to be quite involved in the process. Instead, what I can do, and if you have any John Maxwell listeners, you're probably familiar with the five M's, right? Yeah. What, I, what I can do is I can actually walk with that person and say, hey, I'm going to not just give you a list of things to do, but I'm going to teach you how to do them. And I'm going to give you some responsibility and some power as time goes along to make sure that you feel empowered to be able to execute on this. Because hopefully you can teach someone else one day. So that's the practical side. On a personal level, I'm also, I also have the opportunity and privilege by doing this of seeing what my people are made of. So many times in organizations, you know, a lot of my clients, they're so used to, to hiring externally or we'll, we'll, we'll come up against a problem and they'll say, yeah, we don't have that in house. And I'll push a little deeper and say, well, how do you know? Yeah. And, and, uh, you know, I'm working with a client right now. One, one of my biggest wins for them in the last year and a half is they've internally promoted three managers. Whereas in the first eight and a half years, they had always hired externally. Yeah. Simply because they started to cast a net, started to ask different questions, and they started to take chances on people. Yeah. And as you know, Michael, that's going to do so much for your morale, so much for your business. It totally is. One, one of my dear friends runs a, runs a coaching company. He, he built an automotive repair shop for, for 20, 22 years, multi-million dollar company. And through the process, he learned leadership from Maxwell and some other guys. And he created a company called Leader Shift. And what he does is he teaches other automotive repair shops to do exactly that, to build the people within your organization, to shift them from technician to shop leader to, you know, leader. to, And, and he's built this whole system that he, he's now taken across the nation to automotive repair shops primarily, but other companies too, to, to understand that your, your greatest assets are your people and you need to raise them up. I, I was in a, a ministry for, um, almost a decade here in little, or in little rock arkansas and they had certain key positions that we were vying for and by goodness did they not hire from outside and bring the big gun in right and it killed morale it just went because they didn't do it well they they had talent that they could have cultivated over time and built up and at the same time i was thrown into a senior leadership role one time at that ministry i mean one day i was a director the next day i'm a senior vice president I'm like, what in the world? Nobody taught me anything. Talk about that and how, and the, I guess, how do you help business owners look at their staff, train their staff, lead their staff so that their business actually grows and thrives? Yeah. I mean, I mean, I, again, I think there's a practical element and I'd love to lay it out. <clears throat> and I'd love to lay it out for business owners where I say, at the end of the day, just so you know, ex hiring externally may work for you, but it's actually more expensive. It's less cost effective. 
and you're going to have to build your culture into that person, right. right? So there's so many different layers. But in terms of setting teams up, I think a big question that I, I love to ask owners and I often get in trouble for with owners and entrepreneurs is that culture that you're looking to create, well, does it exist inside of you? You want a culture where people are taking risks, where people are putting their hand up and saying, I'd love to take ownership, give that to me. Have you created an opportunity for that to happen, right? Yeah. And so with this business, this client of mine, you know, it was as simple as sending out a questionnaire and saying, hey, where do you see yourself in this business? What are the things you enjoy? What do you think you could improve? And next thing you know, they had a bunch of people say, oh, I think we could change this. I would love to be a part of this. And now you have people putting their hands up saying, I would like to be part of that shift. Yeah. And so now you have a leadership pipeline where you're like, I don't know where we can go with this, but man. And so, you know, for them, practically speaking, we sent out a survey, we, we had some conversations and now I think they had six or seven people that they decided they're like, these are people that want to put their hand up. Great. Let's go to town and building relationship with these six or seven people. Because yeah. if we can pour into them relationally, and if we can start to show them maybe some of the inner workings and provide clarity and transparency, right. that six or seven, <clears throat> hopefully all six or seven pan out, but we might even get three or four that say, I really want to get into this. And you just found people now that you can mold in your culture and start to elevate and give opportunity to. Absolutely. And think about that. So that's a mindset shift for the business owners and the C-suite team, right? Is to think that way. So that's Matt can help you there, but also the practical nature of it. Now think about what happens there when, when uh, those six people start rising in the company, they're going to tell their friends, their neighbors, their relatives, whatever. And people are going to say, that's the kind of company I want to work for because I have a great company. I'm, I can be there for a long time. I can be built into it. Do you see that happening in, in companies and things that do this? Absolutely. So, so that one client that I'm referring to right now, they're actually, so, you know, uh, they're in the health and fitness space. And so okay. for nine years, they've operated and they're quite successful um, in their studio setup. Um, now, because of this new approach, and now these three internal people that they've now promoted, what they've actually done is free up the two or three owners to actually go and say, well, we're going to go branch off and do two additional businesses, two streams of revenue and generate more income. So what they've actually done is they've created a platform and an opportunity for more people to potentially say, yes, I want to put my hand up. So it actually is so beneficial, not just for, for, for them, it's beneficial for their employees. And now they are known as a company in their town that they're like, oh, they promote internally. Oh, yeah. I want I want to do business with them. They take care of their people. Absolutely. And it, all, all it started with was a, just a mindset shift and honestly, just a desire when we started working together to say, yeah, we're willing to do some things different. We want to try something different. Yeah. And, and, and so, so I want to do, I'm going to do two things. One, I want to talk about mindset because it's so many times people have a negative connotation around mindset. I, well, I work on your mindset. It's like, you're going to put me in a, in a, in a corner and make me go oh, oh, right now. <laughs> No, 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 no. It might says nothing more about how you think, right? Unpack that just a bit. Yeah. Okay. I, I like to frame it this way. At the end of the day, we're all making decisions. We all have thoughts. And what happens is, especially in a business context, and even more broadly in the leadership paradigm, you can either make, you can either have those thoughts come by default or they can be by design. So you can actually just go through your day and just do what you've always done. That's the default, right? Where at the end of the day, I'm just going to keep doing what I've always doing. Or I can add some intentionality and do things by design. This secondary path takes a bit of work, but I promise you, if I do things by design, I'm going to have a radically different result than I would if I was just going by default. And so yeah. the, the, the challenge isn't, oh my gosh, I've got to go do these 17 things. It's it's how do I want to build? How do I want to live? Do I want to live by default, what everybody else is doing? Or do I want to live by design? And oftentimes when I ask it that way, that's the convicting moment for a lot of people where they go, well, I don't want to live like everybody else. I don't want to build the business that everybody else is building. Great. Then that's going to require that you do something a little different. So let's start building by design and being a little bit more intentional. I love that. Man, that is so good. If, if you're just stop what you're doing, rewind this for about two minutes and just re-listen to what Matthew just said, because it is so impactful, so practical. You can start using that today. Are you living by design or default? Are you building your vision of your business by design or default? It's your choice. It's how you think. It's what you do. I love the design or default. That's so simple to understand, Matthew. Thank you for that. 
Okay. How do people work with you? Because here's here's the other thing that I get when I talk to business owners and they think about coaches and consultants like, oh, yeah, they're going to make me do a five year thing and charge me up thousands of dollars. And I mean, how do people how do you engage with people? Is that a conversation at front? Is it three months, six months, a year? I mean, what do you see naturally flow out and what's it even look like? Great. So I actually take a bit of a different approach in that I actually have three offerings. So I either meet with you bi-weekly, weekly, or twice a week. And that'll obviously depend on, on your needs and if we want to involve your team and things like that. And what I do ask is for a six-month commitment. Now, I don't hold anyone to anything that they don't want to be a part of, but I'm a big believer that I want I want it to, I want it to be so abundantly clear that when we start working together that I justify the cost that we stay working forever. I'm leeching on. You're not getting rid of me. Okay. Um you know, I've had the privilege of working with all my clients and keeping them all so far because it's so relational based because I only want to work with people that, you know, there's a bit of a vetting process. And, and I look at you and say, you want to win with me and I want to win with you. Let's be teammates. And so that's the way that I go about it. It's a monthly retainer. Um, again, really no commitment beyond that. I want to make it low friction and easy. And I know there's other people that will have large systems, but for me, everything rises and falls on relationship. And so- at the end of the day, that's how I started, and that's how I want to keep going. I love that, and that's so simple. And I, I and I love the model for lots of reasons. Six months is a is a long enough time to start seeing some results, right? This is not an overnight fix, um, but it's also not a lifetime commitment, although it probably will be. Um, and and um, the the weekly bi weekly um, meetings is frequency. Okay, one one of my marketing philosophy is consistency over time. And that's what you're doing. And, and what I find in, in all the programs that, that I've been part of is if I don't have that kind of a regular check-in with my, my coach, or my I lose interest. I don't get things done. I, I get onto other things. But when I've got an appointment every week, every two weeks, I'm getting things done. I'm staying on task. And I just make more progress to achieve my goals, which is kind of why I hired you in the, in the first place, right? Totally. And you know what? Like, I love to frame it this way. I'm actually not an expert. I'm not even the authority. So if somebody's coming to me hoping that I'm going to throw them the, the, the life preserver or the, the life raft to save them, it's not going to be a good partnership. Yeah. What I am is I identify, Michael, you're the business owner. You're the expert. I'm coming alongside you to help you see your blind spots, to help bring that accountability, that consistency, and help make sure that as an outside perspective, we're looking at all the pros and cons. But at the end of the day, I don't have to be an expert. I just need how, I just need to know how to build people and build business because that's what people are really looking for. Absolutely. And and what happens is when you work with Matthew is you you get his his experience and you get somebody who can who's a super relational because um that's really if you're if you're going to engage in a, a somebody like Matthew, you need somebody you can connect with. Somebody you can be real with and transparent. Um, but you need somebody like him who can actually actually know what questions to ask as they look at your organization and not take the first answer. Well, we can't do that because it's like, really? Let's let's talk about that. Why? Let's send out a survey. Wow. What a simple solution, right? Um, it's the it, it's what Matthew brings to the table that makes him so valuable. It's his life experience, but it's his relational skill set that's going to help you as a business owner and is going to help you build into your teams because of how he helps you think differently. Is that a fair summary? Honestly, it, it's better than what I said. So I'm going to take it. I'm going to steal <laughs> your summary just so you know. No take backs. There you go. You got it, baby. Um, I just, I, I love, I love how you approach this because I'm very big in relationship marketing, building trust with people and, um, Helping one of my one of my um, marketing philosophies. Another one is people buy who you are more than what you do. And when you show up like Matthew and saying, "I'm big on relationship. Here's what I do," it, you can tell that he's super relational. I also like the fact that it's not some kind of like online program where I have to watch videos and I might get you once a month or something. This is this is you and Matthew working and building your business and and achieving your dreams by helping you build your people. And Matthew's just kind of guiding and directing. So um, it, that's kind of how it works, right, Matthew? Yeah, totally. 
I love it. I love it. So if if somebody's out there and, and you you've now scratched their itch a little bit because you're a little different than most coaches and things, which I really appreciate about that about you. Um, what's their next step? How do they how do they start even learning about you a little bit more or finding a way to to connect with you and have a conversation? What's what would be their next places to go? Yeah, great question. You can go to my website, consultingbyprime.com. That's consultingbyprime.com. Or connect with me on LinkedIn, Matthew Sanjari, S-A-N-J-A-R-I, S-A-N-J-A-R-I. And honestly, if you're on the fence, I just love connecting with people. I love being able to just have a conversation, chat with people, learn more about your business. So reach out on my website or LinkedIn. I'd love to connect with you. That is tremendous. Thank you. I'm going to make sure both of those are in the show notes, Matthew, so that uh, our, my busy business owners can uh, go down and, and find that. Reach out to Matthew, LinkedIn, his website, and have that conversation to see how he can help you really build your business by building your people, but also helping you maybe think a little bit differently, asking some questions that need to be asked, and working with you um, in, in building relationships and connections. It, it's going to be phenomenal because um, well, we, we all need an outside set of eyes because you're just too close to your own business to figure it out honestly. That's why we all have coaches and consultants looking into our businesses. I think Matthew would be a great one for you. So reach out to him. Matthew, man, thank you for, for who you are being so authentic to my audience. Thanks for what you do in, in, in building into other business owners because, um, man, we need it in a big, big way. So thanks for doing that. Thanks for being my guest today on Experts Speak. Thanks for having me. It felt like we were in your living room just having a chat. That's awesome, man. I love it. Thanks for being here. And uh, thanks for listening to Experts Speak. Tune in again next week for another fantastic episode. Take care and God bless.